Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Global Foundries with Jamie Schaefer, who's going to talk today about 22 nanometers and are all 22 nanometers created equal. So, Jamie, there was some discussion about when 22 nanometers would finally take hold. Is it real, and what's driving it? 22 FDX technology, 22 nanometer FDSY technology is very real. It is production qualified today, and it is transitioning from test chips to new product introduction with multiple product tape outs in the factory today running at high yield levels. How does that compare to the 22 nanometer bulk offerings that are coming down the pike? Yes, yeah, since 22 nanometer FDSY technologies was introduced, there have been competing 22 nanometer bulk planar technologies introduced into the marketplace. Based on the available data, 22 nanometer bulk technologies are not going to be ready until late 2018 and even 2019 timeframe. So what's the, what's the value of FDSOI versus some of the planar bulk? Many people have tried to scale bulk planar technologies beyond the 28 nanometer node, but this has not been done very successfully in the past. There are really only two approaches to scaling beyond 20 nanometer bulk planar technologies and it requires a transistor with superior electrostatics. Two approaches to this, one is FinFET and one is FDSY. FDSY has some unique advantages compared to a bulk planar tr transistor. It provides 30% higher performance and 45% lower power compared to a 28 nanometer bulk transistor. Whereas if you were to look at a competing 22 nanometer node, a bulk planar technology, you're only seeing, based on the latest data, 10% higher performance and 15% lower power compared to 28 nanometer high K metal gate technology. Why don't you draw out some of the comparison points that people need to take a look at? Sure. Why don't we go through some of these? So PPA, uh, power performance area, what's the difference between uh, FDSOI versus uh, bulk? Well, bulk planar technologies are limited by large random dopant fluctuation, which dominates the mismatch and the variation of transistors at advanced nodes. FDSY provides a fully depleted transistor, essentially eliminating the random dopant fluctuation providing superior mismatch, as well as superior electrostatic capabilities to improve dibble and subthreshold slope. That translates to superior power performance in area compared to a 20 nanometer bulk technology with 30% higher performance, 45% lower power, and that is excluding body biasing capability. There are other aspects to this too, right? I mean, you've, you've got ability to do forward and backward uh, biasing on the power here, which you don't have in bulk. That's right. You don't have the ability to do body biasing in either a bulk or a FinFET transistor the way you can do it with FDSY technology. Um, body biasing is a unique knob that allows you to apply a potential to the back gate of the transistor, dynamically raising or lowering the threshold voltage of that transistor. There are some really unique things you can do to take advantage of that for the power and performance efficiency. One, you can use that to compensate for process variations, temperature variations, or even aging in that technology. This allows you to design with tighter margins, creating more area and power efficiency, efficient designs. This technology has been around for, what, a couple years? This technology was production qualified in Q1 of 2017. Since then, RF technology on top of this with sub six, sub six gigahertz RF, millimeter wave, ultra low leakage, and ultra low power extensions on the technology have all been fully qualified as well. And so the process at this point is mature enough that you can design something here and be sure that it's going to come out exactly as you expected, right? The process is mature. Um, customers are ramping production tape outs in the factory today. There are 36 design wins spanning all the different target market segments, including RF, millimeter wave, and ultra low leakage, ultra low power IoT applications in the factory today. And early production results are very promising with high yields, even operating down to 0.4 volts. So one of the advantages of staying in 22 nanometers is you don't need a three-dimensional transistor structure, and you also, as a result of that, don't need as many masks, right? That's right. The 22 nanometer node was selected as a sweet spot to maximize scaling and minimize your overall mass count. On top of that, because it's a fully depleted transistor, you don't need separate extension and halo implants for each of your VT types. So the overall mass count is 10 fewer than a 28 nanometer bulk or a 22 nanometer bulk technology. This has a lot of benefits. It has improved cycle time to get production wafers out of the fab 
quit more quickly. It also has the benefit of lower overall process complexity uh, to ensure higher overall production yields. So what type of markets are adopting this and how does this technology integrate with other technologies? Yeah, one of the things we're seeing from 22FTX is it has the ability to enable new markets through the integration of RF and high density digital tech, advanced node technology. A um, couple places, you have the ability to integrate RF front end modules, either through advanced LDMOS technology on, the, on, on, on FDSOI, or through the ability, the unique ability, to stack devices through SOI FET stacking for highly efficient PA integration on millimeter wave technologies. Couple applications where we're seeing this, um, in BIOT, for instance, where you can integrate the PAs and switches, the power management unit integration into the technology, integrated with the radio and the baseband, as well as millimeter wave radars, where you can take advantage of high efficiency SOI FET stacking to integrate the PA and switches um, together with the baseband and even embedded non-volatile memory. Why is this technology so good for analog? Is it insulation? Is it uh, the fact that not everything has to shrink on the analog side? What's the value here? For the analog, you can take advantage of superior mismatch char characteristics. So you have 1.2 millivolt micron uh, AVT, which is vastly superior than a bulk technology. You have a, a self gain that's about 2.5x higher than a 28 nanometer high metal gate technology for analog, um, uh, and you have excellent short channel control for a low GDS in this technology. That translates to the ability to, to scale analog designs using 22 FDX technology. I know there was a concern about how far this technology will go out in the future. So uh, I believe uh, Global Founders has added 12 nanometer as the next node. Is there something beyond that as well? What, what yeah, so at Global Foundries, on the 22 FDX technology, we have multiple extensions. First of all, ultra low leakage, ultra low power, RF and millimeter wave extensions, including automotive and EM RAM. All of these extensions are fully compatible with the base platform. They're not a separate platform. They can all be used interchangeably on the 22 FDX technology. On top of that, we have a roadmap all the way down to the 12 nanometer technology node. This is scaling beyond 14 nanometer FinFET technology. Uh, it remains a planar technology with the FDSY based transistor, maintains that key differentiation between FinFET. FinFET has very high drive current per unit footprint. FDSY has very low capacitance, very low parasitics. So even at a 12 nanometer node, you have a transistor that's superior for RF and millimeter wave technology. One of the big changes in design is that it's getting very expensive to move to advanced nodes. Uh, one of the alternatives is to go into advanced packaging. How does FDSOI play into that world? Yeah, FDSOI has a couple options there. One is you can do system integration through advanced packaging uh, for, say, display drivers um, for imaging applications. 22FDX does have higher voltage transistors to integrate into the base platform, so you can have display drivers for CMOS image sensors, for example. Uh, you also have the ability to do multi-chip packaging for, say, emerging AI and machine learning applications where you can take advantage of the very low capacitance for the multiply and accumulate functions in AI machine learning and then stack on top of that high density uh, memory that you would need for those applications as well. Jimmy Schaefer, thanks for a great explanation. Interesting to see how this technology is evolving. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.